All right, we're asked to solve this equation. It's rather lengthy. Um, and notice that it's equal to zero. We're going to use what's called the zero factor property. And the idea of zero factor property is if you have something times something and it's equal to zero, one of these two factors must be zero. Convince yourself of that. The only way to multiply and get zero is if at least one of these is zero. Perhaps both of them are. Okay? We use that property to solve this equation. So since I have something times something equals zero, I can simply take the first set of parentheses and set it equal to zero. That's a strange way of writing eight x, but I did it. Minus nine. I really don't even want parentheses here. All right, so it's just eight x minus nine equals zero. And then I can take this second set of parentheses. I'm going to drop the parentheses though, um, and just say 64x squared minus 144x plus 81 equals 0. So again, this step that I just did, it's not algebraic. That's why I just can drop the parentheses. It's just based on the concept that if you have something times something equals 0, you know one of them, at least one of them, has to be zero. So that's why I'm allowed to just break them up like that. All right, the first one won't be very difficult to solve. Simply add nine to each side. When you do that, you're left with eight x equals nine. Gotta slide this up. One more step. Divide by 8, divide by 8, and this always works nicely. 8 goes into 8 once, 8 goes into 8 once. x equals 9 eighths. But solving this next one won't be quite so simple. This x squared is really the reason we've learned how to factor, because I can't just subtract 81 and whatever else I would do. I, I have a problem with x squared. It's not easy to solve. So that's why we've learned how to factor these. It reduces us from x squared to x to the first power. All right. In order to factor, I'm basically going to be ignoring equals zero and just focusing on this side of the equation, this expression. Okay. Um, do I have a GCF? No. Um, this one's pretty involved. If I multiply 64x squared times 81, I'm going to get an awfully large number. So I'm actually looking for a trick here. Um, you notice 64 is a perfect square and 81 is a perfect square. So I'll show you what I'm hoping. Slide this over. The square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 81 is 9. If I multiply 8 times 9, I get 72. And if I add negative 72 to negative 72, I get this middle term, negative 144. Now, this is just a kind of a fancy trick to know, but this is called a perfect square trinomial. You look at the first and last term. If you multiply them and you can add basically the product and get the middle term, then you have a shortcut to solve it. And here comes our solution. The square root of 64x squared is 8 x. So I'll put 8x in the first position. The square root of 81 is 9, so I put 9 in the second position. And we figured out that 
both of these must be negative. So this is the factored form of that trinomial. Okay. It's equal to zero. I have, let's see, get a different color in here. Something times something equal to zero. So I can take the first set of parentheses and set that equal to zero. I can take the second set of parentheses and set that equal to zero. I didn't really mean to include my parentheses there. Um, all right, now you're going to solve for x. So you will add 9 to each side. Again, I wish I hadn't written the parentheses. So you have 8x equals 9. And you need to get x by itself. So you divide by 8. Divide by 8. You have x equals 9 eighths. Uh, I think you can see the exact same thing would happen here. You would get 9 eighths. Just say I work that out and I got x equals 9 eighths. So for a solution, since it's the same thing three times, you really only need to write it once. And this is saying. You, you have an answer. You solved for x. It's 9 eighths. If you plug in 9 eighths here, 9 eighths here, and 9 eighths here, you will get 0. This is the solution to this equation.